On the way, he met James. Hello, Percy. So you found a scarf, eh? But legs go in trousers, not funnels. And he puffed away to tell Henry the news. As long as I've got rails to run on, I can go anywhere, in any weather, anyhow. Goodbye. Even so, Sir Topham Hatt decided that Gordon needed a rest. James was delighted. He liked to show off his smart red paint and was determined to be as fast as Gordon. You know, little Toby, he boasted, I'm an important engine. Everyone knows it. I'm as regular as clockwork. Never late, always on time. That's me. Can I take Henrietta, sir? James was fuming when he heard the news. I'm going to be late. What, me? snorted James. Me? Push Toby and pull my train too? Grumbling dreadfully, James set off to find Toby. He came up behind Toby and gave him a bump. Get on, you. James had to work very hard. When he reached the workstation, he felt exhausted. I think James couldn't pull it on his own, so Toby had to help him. They're only joking. Huh, said James. Toby just smiled. It was an important day in the yard. A special visitor had arrived and was now the center of attention. Later that night, the engines found that the visitor wasn't conceited at all. He enjoyed talking to the other engines till long after the stars came out. But all the engines were there waiting. Donald was asleep, duck driver and fireman popped something into his water tank. Topham Hat might be cross with him. I warned Thomas, puffed Percy to James. He's been late one time too many. Thomas and Percy are good friends, but sometimes Percy teases Thomas about being frightened, and he doesn't like that at all. Engines went home to the shed. Night and the other engines heard the news, they laughed too. Look out, Percy, chuckled James, or the dragon may gobble you up. The harbor was busier than ever. The engines were resting in the shed. Do you know, added James, if Gordon wasn't here now, I'd say it was him thundering by with the express. At the next station was a sign. James had just finished being cleaned. Bah, said Gordon, and angrily let off steam. Now James will need another shower. You'll have to wait your turn till later. That's for you, and you, and you. Cars will be cars, laughed James. I don't need help on hills, replied James huffily. Gordon thinks he knows everything. The hill was still difficult to climb. James knew this. James began to go faster. I'll do it, I'll do it, he puffed. Halfway up, he was not so sure. I must do it, I must do it. But his wheels slipped on the leaves. He couldn't pull the train at all. Help, help, whistled James. His wheels were turning forward, but the heavy coaches pulled him backwards. The whole train started slipping down the hill. His driver shut off steam and put on the brakes. Gordon saw everything. I'm going to push behind. Clouds of smoke and steam billowed from the snorting engines as they struggled up the hill. We can do it, puffed James. At last, they reached the top. Beep, beep. Thank you. Goodbye, whistled James. Boop, boop answered Gordon. Goodbye. Dirty or clean, I'm a famous machine. But no one heard but him. James is a mixed traffic engine. He can pull both freight cars 
He's proud of his smart red paint, and so is his driver. One morning, James whistled loudly at the other engines. Look at me. I am the smartest, most useful engine on the line. Rubbish. What? replied James. You're getting all puffed up. James huffed away. Later, he was still boasting. I'm the pride of the line. I pull coaches, too. But Sir Topham Hatt has plans for me. James was only making this up, but Gordon believed him. Uh, wait and see. Oh, dear, he thought. Now what'll I do? Good morning, James. Are those coaches for me? Asked James, hopefully. Fetch your freight cars next. But James was going to play a trick on the other engines. Actually, Thomas, I'm taking the coaches. Sir Topham had asked me to tell you. Uh, give them to Gordon. James's driver returned. James was coupled to the coaches and he puffed away. Meanwhile, James was enjoying himself enormously. What a clever plan! What a clever plan! He chuffed. Then he saw Sir Topham Hatt. You have caused confusion. Yes, sir, said James. You will now stay in your shed until you are wanted. The other engines teased James. James is stuck in the shed for being silly. James felt sad. Next morning, he went back to work. I'm sorry I tricked you, said James. Are these my cars? James set off to the harbor with his train of freight cars. He bustled about all day, pushing and pulling them into place. Time to go home now, James. But his driver was wrong, and he whispered to James. This gentleman is a railway inspector. James was most impressed. He steamed along the line as smoothly and quickly as he could. The railway inspector greeted him warmly. This clever engine gave me a splendid ride. You must be proud of him. Really useful engine. James was snorting about in the yard. It's too bad, he grumbled. Percy goes to work at the harbor, and I do his job. Here, there, and everywhere. Take that! Oh, groaned the freight cars. Just you wait. We'll show you. What a good idea, agreed James. Look, here comes Thomas. I'll start pretending now. Thomas was sorry to see the engines looking miserable. He's sick, replied Gordon. Yes, he is. I, I mean, I am, stuttered James. I don't feel well at all. Gordon and James snickered quietly to each other. Later, James spoke to Thomas. I'm sorry about your accident, he muttered, and so is Gordon. We didn't mean to get you into trouble. Just then, Bertie arrived. He looked much more cheerful. Gordon and James puffed silently away to the shed, but Thomas still had company. Well, well, he sighed. Birds were singing and apples were ripening on the trees. It was a lovely day. Hello, Trevor, said James. You look as bright and cheerful as my red paint. What's that noise? James didn't like being told what to do by a diesel, and he buzzed away. James bustled in. What's that, Duck? Are you afraid of bees? They're only insects, after all, so don't let that buzz box diesel tell you different. I wouldn't care if hundreds were swarming around. I'd just blow smoke and make them buzz off. The next morning, James arrived at the station to collect his coaches. The passengers were excited and keen to get on board. So they buzzed around the fireman, hoping he'd mend their hive. But he didn't understand, nor did his driver. So the bees turned to James. His boiler was nice and warm. Buzz off! Buzz off! hissed James. One bee burnt his foot. Ooh! Ah! Ah! Ooh! So it stung James right back on the nose. Eee! Whistled James. So had his fireman and driver. They didn't notice till two. First they spun on the turntable, but to no avail. 
They tried washing them off, but the bees clung harder to James's warm boiler. Then they tried smoking them off by going through a long tunnel, but still the bees wouldn't go away. It's no good, James, said his driver. James's reply was drowned by the sound of buzzing. When he arrived, the... Come on, James, said his driver. What you need now is a good hose down. Later that evening, James was resting in the shed when the vicar came to see him. It's a pity it's not Christmas. Then we could call you James the Red-Nosed Engine. Even James. But instead, they decided to call James the Bee's Knees, which means they thought he was more useful than ever. That's the third load of coal you've had today, Gordon, said James. Some might say you're being rather greedy. James snorted and went about his work. Cheer up, Gordon, said Sir Topham Hatt. I can't, sir. The other engines waited where they could each get a good view. But Henry wasn't a splendid sight at all. Later, Edward spoke to Douglas. The next day, Douglas told the other engines all about Oliver. Sir Topham Hatt will have to know, said Jane. Well, here he is, said a voice. Now, what's this all about? Everyone cheered. All wanted to know about Oliver's adventures. Oliver, said James, has resource. Wise Engine knows that you cannot trust freight cars. The other engines warned Oliver, but he took no notice. All the engines were busy, too. were preparing for the homeward rush. Where are the passengers, they wondered. Mean scarlet deceiver. James was feeling very pleased with himself. His red paint gleamed in the sunshine as he sped along the line. He reached the junction just as Percy puffed in with some freight cars. What are you doing here, Percy? You should be at the station by now. These cars have been troublesome all morning. That's no excuse, Percy. Nothing should stop us. Sir Topham Hatt relies on us to be on time. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be on my way. And James puffed importantly away. Bossy buffers. James arrived at the harbor. James watched as strawberries, oranges, melons, and bananas were carefully loaded onto his cars. Then he set off for the station on the main line. On the way, he met Thomas. Really reliable, that's me, panted James. Pity the same can't be said for Percy. Goodbye. James was stuck on the line and looking glum. Be quiet, it's not funny having jammed brakes. And not very reliable, either. I'm surprised you let it happen, James. Nothing should stop us engines. Can you push these cars? Of course I can. There's no time to lose. James has done too much of that already. James angrily hissed steam as Percy was coupled to the cars. I'll have to go fast to get there in time. Those big engines are so unreliable. The shed was silent. James and Percy felt very sorry for themselves. At last, Thomas spoke. Still, there was silence. So, said a voice, and therefore, we're really useful engines after all. Engines found work difficult. Next morning, they could not believe their eyes. The sheds had been... ...so in delight, and everyone agreed that it was a really happy... It was a beautiful night on the island of Sodor. The day's work was done, and the engines puffed safely home. But please, remind us of the story so far. Especially the happy ending. They were all asleep, too. The other engines were still dozing. It's still early, added James. You just want to show off. d d duke stuttered Toby. James was waiting at the platform. Clanging and clanking, Scarloe steamed in. I've done it. James collected his passengers and respectfully puffed away. He was already there, waiting for him. 
You're late. He snapped. Rusty tries to teach me how to stay on the rails. You poor engine, sympathized James. I know all about diesels. One crept into our yard and ordered us about. I soon sent him packing. James was boastful and sometimes didn't tell the truth. He talked of nothing but steamrollers. I'm ashamed of you, Duncan, said Scarloe. The next day, Reneus came home. All the engines were there to greet him. Edward pushed his truck to the siding, where he pulls from engines lost. Now, all the other engines were talking about Stepney. He huffed away to fetch his coaches. It's his first visit to their railway, and he was having a splendid time. Stepney took the cars to the harbor. to an end. Then he turned his attention to all the other engines. Please do your best. That means this diesel is difficult, snapped James. The diesel surveyed the shed. Get engines like me. A fill of oil at you for hours before you're ready. They held an indignation meeting round the turntable. Disgusting. To say such things to us, cried Donald and Douglas. It's to teach him a lesson we'd be wanting. Now how do we do it? to say goodbye to Stepney. You are always welcome on my Bluebell Railway, too. But the big engines were not feeling cheerful at all. We get no rest, complained James. He edged angrily onto the turntable and spoke rudely to Henry. What's the matter, Henry? There's no rain today. Stop worrying and do some work instead. You look silly enough to be a clown. You should join the circus. Percy, what are you talking about? Engine soon forgot to be tired and cross. James got to pull the train away. Gordon and James felt sorry for Henry, but still teased him. <laughs> At last, the engines gave up. But they don't, said Toby. I have an important letter. Please, can I meet you? My friends say they would like to meet you, too. You could come to my house for tea, but my mummy says there aren't any railway tracks to my house. Hooray! Hooray! The engines whistle. Other engines will be working here while you're away. Clock next morning, the engines waited at the junction. Toby and Percy were each on a truck. Gordon, James, and Henry were waiting to lead off. They the engines cheered. Look out, big city! Here we come! And the cavalcade puffed away. Later in the big city, all the engines were lined up in a split something. As the two engines whistled into the sheds, everywhere they looked, they saw paint pots and painters. The engines wondered who would pull the royal train. He'll choose me, of course, boasted James. You can't climb hills. Then the rain came. The queen is here! Everyone knew that sound. Shh! hissed Henry and James. Beep, beep! Whistled the engines. Ever felt prouder than those on Sir Topham Hatt's railway. Is hard at work at the big station by the sea. Van, said the driver. Just wondering about how this might be done when his thoughts were... Reliable, that's me. Pity the same can't be said for Percy. Goodbye.